in the second module um, of this lecture, we'll talk about starting with the CSP problem and now ex uh, generalizing this somewhat. So uh, it's not immediately amenable to, um, it's not convex, <laughs> turning it into something that we can actually solve with these methods so that we can directly optimize spatial filters and things like that um, using a convex method. So um, we'll, it'll be a little bit mathematical, so you have to bear with me. So say we have a single trial, um, x. It's zero mean. It's, it's one matrix, you know, it's number of channels times number of time points. We have a covariance matrix sigma for that. So it's number of channels by number of channels matrix, square. We also have a matrix of spatial filters, say. Um, that's number of s sources or spatially filtered components times number of channels. It's a matrix. And you have uh, linear weights for linear classifiers, say, like what LDA tends to compute. Uh, theta, which is number of spatially filtered parameters. And you have a bias value B. It's a, just a number. Um, that's you know, the bias of hyperplane, say. So uh, these are the sizes of these, um, uh, these symbols that I'm going to use. So you remember the CSP prediction function, common spatial patterns. What it was was take the data x, multiply by a spatial filter, take the variance of that. And then there was a logarithm, log variance, because it improves you know, sort of the distribution quality. You know, it turns it into something that's more Gaussian. We have to drop the log. That cannot travel with us into the realms we <laughs> want to go. Um, anyway, so you have these variances. So x is a matrix, right? Number of channels times num number of time points. W times x is still a matrix. Number of sources times number of time points. Variance of that is some values, namely the variance of this, variance of that time course. Um, so this is a two k element vector here. This is our weight vector. So the inner product between these two is a scalar. And plus b, that's the final prediction. It's a, uh, it's a scalar output, it is, say, negative on one side of the, you know, say, your hyperplane, if there was such a thing, or, or negative on the other side. So um, that's the thing that we're going to start with. It doesn't look like, well, we'll see what we can do with that. So we'll transform this a little bit. Um, the first step that we're going to do is, instead of taking the variance of this, you know, this um, matrix product here, and doing inner product with that, we can sort of rewrite it and say, first we take the data, multiply it with spatial filters, with one spatial filter vector, take the variance of that component, and then multiply it with, its, with the associated linear weight, and sum it all up over all k and add the bias. That's the same as if you had done it in matrix kind of form. So that's the first step. So we take this now, um, same thing that we just had, and rewrite this a little bit more. Uh, applying a spatial filter to some data and then taking the variance of that is actually the same as um, taking the covariance matrix of that data and pre and post multiplying that spatial filter. Um, that's the same trick that was used in the CSP cost function that we saw in, in lecture seven or so. Um, basically, you can understand this as follows. The covariance matrix is you know, sort of data x times, um, times x transpose. And so that's and divided by number of observations. And if you pre and post multiply this, you have wk times x um, times x wk in each is transposed. So it's the same as the covariance of the spatially filtered x. And so it's if you have just one component, it's the covariance of a time series, and that's the variance of the time series, uh, you know, one channel time series. So that's why this works. It's, however, still equivalent to this. Now it gets a little bit more interesting. Um, this term, uh, you know, taking the vector, the matrix, and the vector transpose, you can rewrite this into an inner product between two matrices. So um, I'll show you this graphically. Um, the vector wk and the transpose, um, if you multiply this out, you get a matrix, right? Uh, the matrix is rank 1. Um, and the inner product between this matrix and, and your covariance matrix Basically, multiply you know this point times covariance matrix at that point and so on. Do it for all and sum it up. Uh, is equivalent to to writing it this way. Okay, you can work it out if you want to. And so we can just you know substitute this part here by this new part. Um, so now we have b plus the sum of some weighting times this inner product. 
And now we do the next simplification. We regroup things in here. Uh, so I just make sure that you are all following. Um, uh, so all of these are just products and sums here, right? Uh, so we can basically take this chunk and turn it into one matrix, which is all these rank one matrices summed up. Uh, now it's a rank k matrix. Um, so it's you know the first spatial filter multiplied out into a matrix times its weight plus next spatial filter multiplied out times its weight and so on. Any inner product with sigma. So um, in other words, now we have just a matrix, an inner product with some other matrix, and adding the bias. Uh, still equivalent to what we started with. And we'll just say, OK, we forget all this inner structure. We are going to relabel this and name it you know, capital theta here. So the whole thing is just an inner product between, two, between a weight vector, uh, sorry, matrix, and some data matrix, happens to be a covariance matrix, plus a B. And um, so inner product, uh, linear, right? So um, you could theoretically vectorize both matrices here and say, this is pretty much the same form as what we had with LDA that we started with. Weight vector, it's the, this matrix vectorized. And a data vector, um, which is you know, the vectorized covariance matrix. And so in other words, if we take as data the vectorized covariance matrix, we could use linear discriminant and analysis, basically, um, in this linear model to learn the right theta. And it'll implicitly give us a solution that is, um, in a sense, representing some spatial filters um, or, or capable of representing some spatial filters in their relative weights and things like that. If you find the optimal linear um, vector, then it, it has to represent, essentially, or, or it is, let's say it's capable of representing these kinds of things spatial filters, just because this is equivalent to this construction from the previous pages. But the trouble is, we cannot just use linear discriminant analysis because um, the, the vector that it has to learn is very long. You know, it's number of channels squared. And if you use LDA, it wants to find the covariance matrix of that to characterize the distribution. And that would be number of channels squared squared. <laughs> So it's just absolutely hopeless to try to learn, say, 10,000 parameters or, uh, or more with that. And that um, takes us to the, to the problem of finding large-scale methods that can learn linear maps and so on um, between data and labels, so to speak, uh, however, with very no large numbers of features and perhaps not too many observations. And that's going to take us to the next module.